What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at file types. Now file types or file formats are everywhere. If you've saved any type of file ever to your computer, you had to save that as a specific file type. So in this lesson, we're gonna be diving into exactly what file types and file formats are and how they are used. So with that being said, let's jump over to my screen and take a look. All right, so let's take a look at what file types are. File types refer to the format in which data is stored in a file. And you're gonna see even in the next slide, there are so many different file types out there. There are a lot. And we're gonna get into specific file types in this video that you can see a lot of the different types of files that are very commonly used. Each file type is designed for a specific purpose and it depends on what kind of data it's holding and how it's going to be used or shared. You really can think of these like a container, whether it's a bowl or a plate or it's a vase. Each one of these containers is designed to hold different things and that's kind of like what a file type is used for. Now, if you go right now, you look at your file explorer, if you're using a Windows machine, if you go to your view and you look at the details, the view is right next to the sort button up there, you can see a different type of file type. And with all, this is my actual, you know, file explorer right now. If you go look in my downloads, we have a lot of different stuff. I have MP4 files. I have different file folders that holds different files. I have PNGs. I have CSVs. I have PDFs. I have all sorts of stuff. To the right of this, you can see the size as well. All these different file types hold the data differently, and some take a lot more data than others. So that size is how much data is actually stored within that file. Let's take a look at probably the most simple type of data file or data format that you'll see, which is a text file. A text file is super simple and just stores data as plain text, often used for unformatted or tabular data. This is data that I would work with all the time as a data analyst, we would work with text files and CSV, which stands for comma separated values. This image on the right hand side is being stored right now as a text file. But if I then went and saved it as a dot CSV, it would separate these values based off of the commas. So country, salesperson, order amount, quarter, this data would be separated and all the commas going down on each row would be separated into basically columns and rows. CSV and text files are super common and they can store a lot of data very simply because they're just storing plain text. And so it doesn't get super complex. And so it's a very popular type of file format. Next, we have structured file types. Now, these are files that store data in a predefined structure, typically rows and columns or in a hierarchical format. One of the most common types is one that I'm sure almost everyone has used. That's an XLSX. That's going to be an Excel file. So your typical Excel workbook and so right here on the right-hand side, this is your standard workbook. You're gonna have columns and rows and different worksheets, and you'll be able to do different things with that data in these Excel files. We also have a .db file, and this stands for a database file. So oftentimes in the data world, if you're working with a customer or a client, they might give you an entire backup of their database, and you can go and use that. And within that database, they're gonna have columns and rows, especially if it's a relational database. They're going to have columns and rows, just like an Excel file, but on a much larger scale. It typically can hold a lot more data. And then, of course, you get more complex things within a database file, like database schemas to connect and bring all that data together. Next, we have semi-structured file types. Now, these get a little bit more complex. These file types have a loose structure, often used to store complex data relationships. Some common formats for this are JSON and XML files. Now, these can get a lot more complex than just columns and rows, because in columns and rows, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. But something like a JSON file, which we have on the right hand side, you can have data nested within other data, which just means data within data within data. And so there can be lots of layers to this data. This is another one that's just really popular and really common within data professionals. And they are really great for storing data that's a little bit too complex for something that's really simple like columns and rows. Next, we have unstructured file types. Now you saw this within my file explorer. These are files that don't follow a specific format. They don't have columns and rows. Rows. They're often just raw data or multimedia data. For example, this video that I'm recording right now, I'm recording onto an MP4 file. This image on the right of this beautiful little hummingbird is a .png, or there's actually lots of different formats for images, but PNG is probably the most common one. Lastly, we have big data and specialized file types. So these file types are designed specifically to handle really large scale data efficiently. 
One of the most common and one that if you've worked in the data world or you've worked in Azure or maybe even AWS that you might be familiar with, it's something called a parquet file. Parquet files are very common, especially if you're working in something like Spark. That's something where I've used it quite a bit, or even Databricks, where you're bringing in massive amounts of data and you want to do that in a really efficient manner. And so it has all these different properties that they bring in to these Parquet files that a normal CSV file would never be able to do or handle. But what file type you choose can be extremely, extremely important. And I've made a lot of mistakes over my years as a data analyst, storing data in you know one file format versus another. And that has caused issues. And so, and so knowing how data actually is collected and used and stored and analyzed and shared, you have to take all these things into account when you're determining what kind of file type you want. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at data collection. And we're going to address this exact thing because if you store data in a specific way and then you want to put it in a database, it may not be possible if you store it incorrectly. And so there are a lot of things to consider within just data collection, but... This has been our lesson on file types. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was useful. This has been something that over the years of working in data has just become more and more important. And it's definitely something you need to consider, especially when you're working with data consistent. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.